Hi, this is Dr. Daly. I'm the Regional EMS Medical Director for the Remo Region, and I wanted to take a minute to talk about a new procedure which will allow us to leave patients at home if they have influenza-like illness or COVID-19. This will include giving the patient an information handout, which is specific for patients who aren't transported to the hospital. The goal is to allow people to convalesce at home rather than bring them to the hospital unless there are specific needs that can only be met in the hospital. This is in order to keep people as safe as possible, maintain the hospital ability to take care of other patients, and assure that indeed we're making the best decisions for our patients. The procedure to triage people and leave them in place is specific to this viral pandemic. This is not for all patients, but it's for people who meet a specific subset of criteria that we believe will allow them to stay home safely. We cannot stress enough that during this pandemic, all patients must be screened from six feet away. We wanna do this because this disease is transmitted through respiratory droplets, and that distance of six feet allows us to maintain the safety of our workforce always screen from six feet away. The questions we're asking includes whether or not this patient has signs and symptoms of an influenza-like illness. Does this patient have a fever? Either they've had a measured fever or they have subjective temperature. Do they have symptoms including upper respiratory symptoms like sore throat, nasal congestion? Do they have lower respiratory symptoms like wheezing, cough, and shortness of breath? And do they have signs and symptoms of gastrointestinal illness, headache, or fatigue? If they don't meet these criteria, they don't fall into this protocol and follow standard ALS and BLS treatment protocols as normal. If they do fall into these, if they do have these symptoms, then this protocol can apply, in which case, Don all the appropriate PPE before getting any closer to that patient. Put on a mask, either an N95 or a surgical mask, gloves and eye protection. Put on a gown if it's appropriate because you believe that there will be a, a aerosol generating procedure performed or this patient is critical. Make sure to limit contact to that patient to as few providers as possible and keep any other personnel at least six feet away for their safety. Only providers wearing appropriate PPE should be in contact with that patient. One question that we've gotten a lot is what does close contact mean? And the answer is that it means being, being less than six feet away from a patient for a prolonged period of time. What is a prolonged period of time? More than a short period of time. Unfortunately, that's not something that there is a clear definition for. So remain six feet away from a potential influenza-like illness for your safety. Once we know that this is indeed a patient who could have an influenza-like illness, we're gonna do an assessment. That's gonna be an objective assessment first. And if any of the things in this assessment have an answer of yes, then what we're gonna do is follow normal treatment protocols and talk to medical control if we have any question. In many of these, in many of these settings, this is gonna mean the patient will be transported. When we initiate this assessment, the first thing we're gonna see is whether or not this patient is extremes of age. Is this patient over the age of 65? These are the patients that are at the most risk for COVID-19. We're gonna look at their vital signs, including temperature, if available, respiration, saturation, heart rate, and blood pressure. If any of these are abnormal, the patient should probably be transported to the hospital. Or you should talk to a physician about whether or not this is a patient who could appropriately be treated in place. If the patient has altered mental status, that's a patient who should be transported to the hospital while we're following our standard treatment protocols. If the patient is a pediatric, please consult the protocols for appropriate pediatric vital signs. And make sure that for young pediatric patients, you consult medical control before you leave them at home. 
When you obtain the patient's medical history, what you're trying to search for is whether or not there are any medical historical components that will make this patient at increased risk of complications. Are they a diabetic? Are they pregnant? Does the patient have cardiovascular or pulmonary disease? Are they immunocompromised? Do they have advanced cancer? Do they have any other diseases that potentially could leave them at risk for more complications? If so, either, treatment, either treat them through the normal treatment protocols and transport them, or consult medical control if you have any questions. Also, as you explore their medical history, are there any secondary conditions or other presenting problems that actually have a different explanation? Like perhaps this patient is having chest pain along with their coughing, but that chest pain is concerning that it may actually be cardiac chest pain. Common things happen commonly, and we still have the usual medical conditions that we were treating prior to COVID-19. Remember those, and let's make sure we're not missing any. If you have any questions, call medical control. If these criteria are met, the patient may be left behind and not, trans not be transported. Give the patient the handout that we'll discuss next and document that you gave the patient that handout and that they agreed to be left in place on your PCR. Please recognize this is not an RMA. The patient has not refused medical attention. What you have done is appropriate shared decision-making to leave the patient at home after treatment in place rather than bringing them to the hospital. There may be more clarification of this over time but it's completely appropriate for us to start doing this now. The handout you're gonna leave people with is a set of discharge instructions, just like they would have gotten in the hospital. This set of discharge instructions reflects the shared decision-making that you did to leave them at home rather than transporting them to the hospital. It encourages people at all times that if they get worse, the handout people will get is reflective of the shared decision making that you need to make with them in order for them to feel comfortable staying at home rather than being transported to the hospital. This is really the key. We need to make sure that people understand that there's nothing else that will happen for them in the hospital and that the algorithm that you've just followed to screen them for this means that we have looked for the things that will potentially be complications for them. Our goal is to make sure people feel comfortable calling us back if they get worse and to make sure that people convalesce appropriately at home. People know that they should contact their doctor or 911 in an emergency. We also need to know that people are aware that anytime they contact a healthcare provider, they should tell us about their cough and fever so we can put on our PPE and keep ourselves safe. These instructions also just generally tell people what to do, like staying at home if they don't have a, until they don't have a fever, because that way they're going to keep the rest of the public safe as well. It encourages social distancing and encourages them to clean surfaces in their home to make sure that they're keeping other people in their household safe. This instruction handout also has the COVID-19 hotline for the Department of Health and Remo will make available local health department versions of this specific to the county departments of health across the Remo region. We've entered into a new world with COVID-19. We need to make sure that we're keeping ourselves and our partners as safe as possible. Wash your hands, wear your masks, maintain social distancing and stay safe. You, our EMS providers, are our most important resource as we battle this. Everybody hang in there together. We'll be okay.